super awesome video game show that is totally serious, and we're paying attention and everything. Oh, reels. Wait, what is the show again? Welcome, everyone, to the I'm super a, just call yeah. it super awesome video super game show. awesome video game show that is totally serious, and we're paying attention for reels. Yep, I am John. Hey, I'm Jeff. And, and we're playing probably one of my favorite games on the PlayStation 3. Yeah, I feel like I've been dominating this shit. So this week I was like, John, what do you want to play? And he was like, I want to play Valkyria Chronicles. I was like, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Because if you are a human being who's never played this game before, holy shit, you totally need to play this game. Yeah, I, I honestly, uh, while I may not have bought it for this game specifically, it was this and two other games that I actually bought a PS3 for. Yeah. Uh, which was this, Uncharted and Uncharted 2, and then also uh, Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain, yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, this was a a, a big one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely adore this game, and it's been a long time. Oh, I, yeah. I, I have subtitles turned on. What's going on? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it, well, it, it had, whenever there's a title thing, it doesn't do the subtitles. Uh, but uh, it's a lot of stuff <laughs> going on. Yeah. Because it's essentially introducing you to this world that's essentially like an alternate history. World War II is what this game is. Yep, pretty much. I don't know what it is about Japan where it's always got to be some kind of crystal thing, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, this is a Sega game. I'm like, if it was square, I'd just be like, well, it's square. Yeah. You know, we're going to have a cavalry chocobo core or well, whatever. The one of, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be very well be wrong here, the lead developer is the same guy who developed Skies of Arcadia. Okay. I've never played Skies of Arcadia. Oh, it's a really good game. Matter of fact, there are uh, three characters from Skies of Arcadia actually are cameos in this game. Two of them are playable, and one is uh, a medic. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's uh, Skies of Arcadia for was uh, released on Dreamcast and... Also released, re-released on GameCube, if I remember correctly, for anyone who wants to go look those up. I'm actually kind of paying attention to this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I just I don't want to... It's such a... It's, a it's, it's one of those things a lot of times where they do alternate history stuff where it really... It, you know, sometimes in, in games like Final Fantasy or, yeah. or other series, you can kind of just gloss over stuff. But, like, all this shit here is important. Yeah. To the storyline. Um, all right. I really like this interface, too, with yeah. the book. Yeah, where it's all a book, and it's all being told by uh, by a per the person who wrote this book. Yeah. Uh, which is even funny, because they'll show quotes, and they'll say, you know, this is quoted from so-and-so in this book, and it's the book you're reading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. All so right. The, we'll start with the, uh, you know, the f I guess the, the first episode, which... The only thing that conf that I, I do, first of all, I love the artwork. Yeah, I love or the art, the art style, the style of the game. Mm -hmm. The kind of the it's like pencil pencil shaded uh, watercolor. And yeah, and it's I mean it's mostly just it's kind of just cell shaded, but they didn't they didn't but they just have this overlay of this this these pencil strokes kind of on everything. Yeah, it, well it's interesting because when you actually get to the the sides, it looks black and white. Yeah, we're on the edges there. I. Which is, I mean, it's a simple technique, but it works really well for this. It really sets it apart and gives it like a its own sort of look and style. Um, where if it didn't have that, it would it would be. It's it's also very a very much colorful game, a very colorful game. And it, it this came out like six years ago, I yeah. guess. And I, I seem to remember it kind of coming out in the throes of when consoles were very much like everything seemed like it was brown and gray and military, you yeah. know. And suddenly you've got this just bright, colorful. Uh, kind of wonderful looking looking stuff that takes place during a war. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of. I mean, I don't exactly know what to call the cultural difference. Yeah. But you know, you watch enough anime, and you find that like, uh, yes, it takes place during a war. But this guy's way inter more interested in drawing these fish than he is with like the people that have been refugeed out of their homes behind him. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> like the focus is on like, yay, go do your best. Woo. Freeze. Yeah. <laughs> Which I will say there is, a, they did do a, a, an, a, an anime mm -hmm. of this sh based on this game. Okay, uh, it's really good. Uh, it was a full twenty-four episode series with a couple of OVAs. Okay, um, really good. I would highly recommend checking those out. Unfortunately, they never got released here stateside. But huh, um, the one with the gun. The one with the gun. 
Why do they have firemen helmets on? Uh, they're with the, the, l- the name of their town on the front of it. Because <laughs> they're the local town. That's that's their. They're really proud. Yeah. But uh. Nothing really. I was just sketching the fish, and you know. Yes. Oh, I know. Um. And you know there's a war on, don't you? Okay. Well, she has a little bit of common sense. Down at the station. He's being arrested for sketching fish. Yeah. Well, she thinks he's a spy, and that he's that's a cover story is that he's sketching fish. Ah, uh, okay. Thanks a lot, fish. Stupid Asshole. fish. Terrible fish. That's the only. That's one of the other things that I I'm not like. I love a lot of things about this game. I don't necessarily like the fact that they make you go through. Like cutscenes. Well, no, that each of these little pictures is an individual chunk of the story. When you yeah, could, you could honestly just stitch it all together instead of making me click on the next thing in order. Well, and to, that's actually what know. I was going to say before I got distracted by the art style of the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like sometimes you're playing cutscenes, but you can't skip. The, I mean, you can skip them after you play them. Right. But I don't want to. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> She's gonna. Read every detail and try to find a hidden meaning messages. Is that you? And what's the thing? Like, there's a weird in this game universe. There's this weird thing where, like, people with black hair. There's like racism against them or well, something. Well, yeah, they're they're the the Darksons. Uh, yeah, that's their race. Um, they are kind of looked down on as second class citizens, uh, and they're being persecuted. Uh, Seems like a weird thing from a Japanese developer to put in that all everybody who has black hair is is you know treated like asshole in this universe. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it's a given the time period, and they they obviously they wanted that. Uh, given that you know that's supposed to be an alternate history, sure. Uh, and this is supposed to be an analogy for World War Two, sure. Uh, they, they, of course, they're going to have some race that's persecuted yeah uh not as i don't think it's they're persecuted as heavily as say the jews i wouldn't think so but they are persecuted pretty heavily that might kind of bust up the the kind of light and and fluffy anime vibe that we've got going on here yeah Uh uh-oh it's that truck I like the way that that the the essentially the Nazis in this game like are all wearing like these giant suits of armor. Oh, the Imperials, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can tell that I I I I, I know this game. <laughs> yeah. Um. I got to tell you too that this also, um, you know, by the time that this game came out, I was so sick of World War II that the only way that you could have gotten me back interested in it would be to make it into this kind of crazy anime yeah. alternate history style. Like, yeah. if this had been the same game, but it was just, like, an actual World War II game, I probably wouldn't... I probably wouldn't give a shit. Yeah. Like I said, I, I, I do wish it was a little bit more streamlined. I actually... One of the things I will say about this is that I always uh, regret uh, is I never bought a PSP mm-hmm. to play either the second or third game which are psp exclusive yeah that's um god i really i think i played the second i think i played a little bit of the second one but once again you've got this problem of um wanting to play a huge rpg on a handheld what i've I've talked about before where i just don't want to do that and when valkyrie when uh, valkyrie profile because i was looking up other stuff but valkyrie chronicles 2 came out um I actually eventually managed to get a PSP Go oh, yeah. with the output to the cradle that lets you output it to the TV. You could slave a Bluetooth controller to it, so you can essentially just play on the TV. Oh, yeah. But that's a big investment for, yeah. you know. I did it for Metal Gear because, you know, me. Metal of course. Gear. But, um, all right. There's three of them. I have to kill them. <laughs> Murderize them. Yeah, yeah. We know. Actually, we should probably go. I mean, once you well, get in there, you can go over it. Yeah, I'm going to go over a lot of the stuff. So uh, basically what they're explaining is that uh, each turn you have command points, which are these shield things that they're pointing out at the top. And yep. uh, basically that's how many times you can move a character or how many times you can move a person during a, a turn. Yeah. 
So uh, essentially, for those wondering, this is a tactical RPG without the grid format. Which, huzzah. Because Which well, it, or I I say huzzah because I'm kind of sick of that that style as well. But yeah, so instead of the grid, instead of moving squares, you have this gauge that they're talking about. Where that gauge, the more you move, the further down that gauge goes. Mm-hmm. When it imp- when the gauge is empty, you stop moving essentially. Yep. Um, so it, which really sucks when you're out in the middle of of nowhere. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of itch. One of the things that I really like about this game is that they've incorporated a lot of, um, a lot of kind of just like third person action game. They they essentially took a third person action game and then made it into a turn based strategy game. Uh, you know, you've got cover, you've got this free range, you know, free roaming movement. You have to aim your attacks instead of just getting kind of automatic. Uh... Oh, I was trying to go for the instant kill. Yep. That was stupid of me. Ah. But the cool thing is, is once you actually shoot, that doesn't actually end your turn. Right. Uh, unless you have, like, no uh, action points left, which is that bar I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I've still got... He can still move, so I'll crouch him to put him under hiding. And and it's interesting because when you're moving, if there's, a f- I mean, if there's an enemy unit during your move turn, and the same is true for you as well, that's within your line of sight... They basically just get to free attack you the entire time that you're running. So Correct. see, like yeah, this, like this person when actually. she's moving, uh, he's attacking the entire time. Which means that there's, you know, there's a part of it where even though you could, like, you could just sit behind that cover, um, you could just sit behind that cover without having to actually initiate going into an attack. But that guy gets to just shoot you the entire time that you're doing that. And I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna play very uh, strategically. Like yeah, very conservatively. <laughs> Even though it's just the tutorial and it's designed to let you run your ass out there. Yeah, to run out there and, and, and wreck shop, as it were. Because mm-hmm. uh, there's only three people. Uh, but I'll take this this nameless scout. Oh, now they tell us about using cover. Yeah. Uh, which you'll see that I did hide behind some sandbags, uh, position my guys behind them. Um, and it basically states that while you're undercover... Uh, they, people can still hit you, but they can't do like critical shots. Yeah. While you're undercover, and same for when you're shooting Uh-oh. people that are undercover. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, out of action points. <laughs> uh, there you go, folks. That's what happens. I wasn't paying attention. Let me hope for the headshot. So yeah, there is there is an element of kind of random chance when it comes to you know lining those shots up, and um, and the other thing is it, because it doesn't have the grid based system. I feel like it's a little bit more loose because, you know, you can get into a position like you are right now where you're trying to run for a piece of cover and you just, oh, you just barely don't make it so you can't go into cover, which just gives the whole thing a little bit more organic feel than you get out of the very much like... Like you know ahead of time you can't make or, it. Or, or, you know, uh, Tactics Ogre or like uh, what was the Fire Emblem where, you know, where it's a, where it's a grid-based thing or where it's a hex-based thing. Like you know I can move four, four grid spaces yeah. and then stop. Whereas here it's a little bit more, it's a little bit messier. And I feel like that just contributes to, um, it just gives the game a very different feel. It yeah. feels much more... I, like I said before, like a third-person action game that just happens to have all this weird RPG stuff in it, which is something I really like. Yeah, I. Yeah, no, it, it is. It, it does feel. I, I this game was a breath of fresh air for me because um, I love tactical RPG style games. Mm-hmm. Um, and to give you a Fire Emblem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I have to play that at some point. Uh, but essentially, what what it was just telling t- saying is that if you uh, don't use all your your uh, sh- those uh, shields, the command uh, points, the command points. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't use them all, yeah, you keep the ones you don't lose. So you can you can also plan strategically by uh, not using uh, uh, command points, right? Uh, so that you can have a large number of them ahead of time, or for like you know two. You can bank them, yeah. in case you want to use them later on for a, a larger. Because the other thing is, I did it go over already that you can actually use command point to move the same unit like two or three times uh, in a row. Not yet. Okay. But yeah, you can use <laughs> it to move a, a command point multiple times, use a person to, like you were saying. Right, move a move a character multiple times. It's just that each time they are able to move less. Um, yeah. it does cut down their their action point gauge each time that you consecutively move them. All right. 
So that's uh, you know, that was the first battle. Sometimes the one of the things that, that sometimes irritates me about games like this is when it grades you on your performance. Yeah. Where it says like you got a B. It's like, what did you want from me to get an A? I don't entirely understand. Um, it's basically the less moves you do, and the less your guys get hit. So the more health that's all graded by you know how much health your guys have. Sure. Uh, how many turns you do it in? How many command points you have left over? Right. Um. So but in other words, for that one, I mean, it's like you didn't exactly you didn't you weren't exactly wasteful with turns or moves or anything like that. It also counts luck as well. Like had I killed that guy the first time. Right. You probably could have gotten a little bit further. I probably could have done it in one turn. Mm -hmm. You know. I think that's. Oh, anime. She'll protect everyone. It's not. It's not necessarily that she wants to protect everyone. It's that she feels the need to earnestly declare her intention to protect everyone. That that sets off my anime o meter. You know what I really is. I wish they would make a. Um, an Attack on Titan game. Yeah, no, actually, I think I th they are. Th there's they? well, I think there's one for portables for like the 3DS or the PSP or something like that. Yeah. Um, but that franchise seems like it's so popular. I don't know what it is. I mean, uh, you know what? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just having a hard time thinking of any right now. But like, all of my favorite big ass anime series, almost every one of them could have been made into a video game, and yet there seems like a very little crossover between. Yeah. Good high profile like AAA video games and anime series. Yeah, like I would I would expect you know it would should be like a no brainer right for Cowboy Bebop to have its own third person kind of action stylish type of game or yeah you know there was a Ghost in the Shell game where you drove the the Tachikomas the entire time yeah and it was like well, but I want to be Major Kusanagi I don't want to be the tanks you know. I mean, I guess there have been a bajillion and one Gundam games, but most of them, or most of the ones that I've played, there's like two, I think, that well, were any good. You also have uh, certain you know animes that are spawned from games, like Gungrave yeah. uh, was a game on the PS2. Then the creator remade it, if I'm not mistaken. He made like a like like kind of scratched the story of the game and remade it again, but then also made it as an uh, as an anime. Sure. Uh, which just, was I, really popular. I, guess, I mean, you know, I just I think back to all of the. I mean, Gurren Gurren Lagann, like yeah. that one. I, I don't know if there has been a game for that, but my God, there should be. Like that game, that that anime is all about fighting and robots and ridiculousness. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. you know, I'm not gonna sit here and try to tell you that I think Fooly Cooly should be turned into a video game or anything. No. but it's you know, crazy. Unless Gurren, it's like a fighting game or or, or Death Note. Like, I don't think Death Note would make an especially good video game. Well, and, and here's the thing. I'm sure a lot of them ha you know, do have video games that just never got released stateside. Maybe so. Maybe um, so. Because, I mean, there there are a lot of... There are... I mean, I guess there's all the Naruto games and the... Or, uh, yeah. And, and, you know what, guys? In the comments, whenever I say that word, everybody keeps saying that they want to punch me in the face because I'm saying it wrong. Because you're saying Naruto instead of Naruto? Is that how you say it? Uh, nobody's ever corrected me. That's the thing. Is that They're upset that I'm saying it wrong, but nobody's ever explained to me how to say it correctly. Uh, um, well, it's hard to tell you how to say it correctly through text. You know, get to write it phonetically. I can read that shit. I don't how to. Yeah. I know how to read a dictionary. Uh, but you've also got. Um, They're probably going to complain that we're saying anime instead of anime. Oh, uh, whatever. Uh, the and this is Dragon Ball Z games. Yeah, right? there's Dragon Ball Z so games. A zillion Dragon Ball Z games. There was a, a couple of Robotech games. There was. What's the other one? Uh, uh, I think there's. Has there been a Bleach game? Yes. I, see, I don't watch any of uh, those. The Bleach games are uh, 3DS and like PlayStation Portable, if I remember correctly. Okay. All right. Goodbye, nice lady. Why are, was that funny? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah. This actually... Th it's funny. We're going to skip a little bit ahead in part two, but the, this... The beginning of this game, it, it takes like what's like four missions or so to really ramp up to, to yeah. you know what what the game actually well, ends up being later on. Teaching you yeah. how to play the game, but that's you know what I'm just going to interject and say that that is something about JRPGs that I feel um, Japanese developers should be revisiting, which is integrating that tutorial period into the beginning of the game very quickly instead of spending forever sometimes. I mean, like, yeah. Final Fantasy 13 
13 2, 13 3. Like the ramp up period at the beginning is just, it seems like, oh, this is just taking forever. I mean, it would be one thing, I guess, if they started with their strong open where they give you, you know, like you're playing a really big battle that's unrelated somewhere that shows you all this awesome stuff that you'll end up being able to do. But yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, in this, in the, in regards to this one, they're trying to get you to know the, who the main characters are going to be, and they're trying to set up a story. They're trying to, to set up the world, and sure, you know, they do well, have it's their the guy from Persona Four and the tablecloth head over there. That's I've, I've been paying attention, John. I, oh, okay, sorry, sorry. These are for me. You brought me a, a large assortment of breads. She's a, she's a baker. Okay, she bakes. See. Well, she could have just brought you like one thing of croissants or. French bread or something like that. Oh, you brought me stale bread. Wonderful. I'm trying to think what the last... <coughs> you know, we just had Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns come out, but I'm trying to yeah. think what... what uh, there was a... Um, I guess Bravely Default. Yeah. It was pretty recent. I'm trying to think of other JRPGs that came out. Bravely Default, by the way, is really good. I'm really enjoying the hell out of that game. I've heard good things about it. Very much scratches the old school, old school Final Fantasy itch um, of having four four characters with different jobs, you know, rolling around an overworld, and then you hit a random encounter and you go in and you fight. But I have a hard time about it with it, John, though, because I don't want every JRPG to just be Final Fantasy all over again or yeah. Dragon Quest. I mean, I like it, games like this when they take a chance. On the other hand, oh, well, Lightning sure Returns took a chance on collapsing your party into one Seriously. character and Not making it more action-based, and it was okay, but it just, it like... Did not feel as it, it was not as interesting of a battle system as say this game. Yeah, no, no, I can see that. But uh, yeah, and this is where they're kind of explaining who his father is. He was a general. Um, He's the, the. Were they in the Mexican military? No, uh, no. The other person is a dark son. Ah, okay. Uh, which is what they're going to explain here. Yep. Uh, which is her father. Yeah, I always there's a point in this game that I got to a few times, and then I would always stop playing. Uh, uh, it's the the first big tank. Yeah, level. yeah. There's a giant. The, you end up with this giant tank that like, like it's 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 like a building on the map. Yeah. You know you you, and it's really difficult because it'll just tear your guys up uh, if you don't go at it in a very methodical way and I think that when I finished when I finally finished that encounter as I had to redo it so many times I was just kind of like oh whew. all right I'm not really interested in playing this game anymore no it's it's uh, I'll admit that that tank level is probably the hardest level in the entire game mm -hmm. um and it's 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 also very much a spike in difficulty like yeah you know because at a certain point you've got you've got you know, the 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 tank shows yeah. up uh and you've got your team you can put them together how you want to <laughs> so you're rolling around and you're you've got some constraints and some missions of things you've got to do and then suddenly they're like here's this building tank and you've got to take it down and it's just like from zero to fuck this is hard in no time flat yeah well and also one of the things that it, i will say one of the things that this game kind of doesn't harp on it tells you about it but it doesn't like get in your face about it yeah is that as you're playing in addition to the main story missions mm -hmm. there's also these uh these skirmishes. side skirmishes yeah uh and the thing about skirmish the main story missions you can only play once right so like it only counts once and you yep. only get the xp from them once um but the skirmishes you can play essentially you can grind sure uh with skirmishes by getting you know by replaying the same skirmish multiple times mm -hmm. uh, to get more stuff to upgrade your your guys. Yep. And it kind of tells you just once, like, hey, you can do this. You want to do this so that you can upgrade your guys. Mm -hmm. And then they never bring it back up. So if you're not 
like, See, I, I, paying attention to it or not doing that, your characters tend can be like if you only played the single story. Oh yeah, you get you get myrtle moitalized. Yeah, you just get totally messed up. Yeah, I, I think. Well, see, the thing is that I think that if I, I it's been so long because I think I played this once when it came out, and then I played it a little bit after that. And this is one of those few games where I I never beat it. But I think that the other part of that is what you guys will see when we get to that part is that the upgrades are also locked behind some of the gear specific upgrades and the you know like you can upgrade the um, character class levels yeah. independently kind of whenever you want to but you get to a point where you have literally done all the unlocks for weapon upgrades and armor yeah. upgrades and things like that so at a certain point you kind of become trapped in the case of that where you're like the only thing really to do here is to fight this big ass tank and I guess I'm just going to have to figure out what it is that that you guys want out of me yeah, and you also the other thing is is that when you do up do the upgrades, you get like these, um, and I guess we can we can talk more about that in the the second the second one. But you get like hey, these dude, that's not upgrade cool. things, and, and like the i the the tank, the main tank in the game, yeah, uh, the Idlewise uh, can only have so many upgrades or parts at any given time. So right. You, so and you you have to mix and match and kind of fit them in almost like a Tetris like grid. Mm -hmm. It's a little mini game. Um, and decide, and you can change it up to change up your loadout for your tank. Now, why did these guys? Why are they attacking the mill? Well, they're they, just attacking the city because they it's, don't, they it's don't like bread. I probably shouldn't have clicked past that, but uh, but no, um, it, it, they're just attacking. They're invading. Uh, just fucking shit up like you do, like yeah. the like the Imperials do in every fictional story that there is because they're the bad guys. Yeah, I want to write a movie where the Empire is the good is, is they're the good guys. Well, the interesting thing is there's a DLC for this game uh, for one of the bad guy character bad characters mm -hmm. uh, in which you kind of play from their point of view right before this. You know, I, I want to say it's like it takes place a little bit before and goes about halfway into uh, the story, a little bit into the actual time period of this story. Okay. Um, which is really interesting because you are playing it from someone who is from the other side. Right. Uh, and it, it and it's people that you can actually you know sympathize with. Sure. Uh, which I think is really uh, really cool that they did that. Well, I mean the the character the 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 focus on character in the storyline. Um, means that, I mean, once you get into, uh, at least I remember once you get into at least kind of like the midpoint of the story, nothing is cut and dry. There is no straight good guy, straight bad guy kind of stuff. Or I don't mean... You, no, there's I, a straight bad guy. Is there? Okay, yeah. well, I never met him. I, I yeah, met, no, you, you, I met the, the lady last, on the front of the, the box. Yeah, no, but there, there is a, a, a straight, like, this guy is evil kind like of... Like just twirling his mustache, yeah. I want to burn everything down, kind of Kefka style. yeah. Well, it's not that he wants to make burn the world down. Is that he wants to get all of these people out of this country? Yeah. So that he can mine the the ragnite. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, because that's what he wants. Because it's a limited resource, and this country has a lot of it. Okay. Uh, and that's that's the reason that this war started. Is that no blood for ragnite? That's that's what we chant when when I do my marches, <laughs> the Valkyria marches. Got a second? Yeah. Yes. Yes. She's going to explain yep. about damage. Uh oh yeah that's another good that's another good thing is that <coughs> you do get hit points back at the end of every turn yeah uh which is nice because it means that you can take you can take more chances you don't have to I mean this could be the sort of game you know once again this is six years old so I the the um the comparison is a little strange about XCOM about how you know you don't want your units to die in XCOM but you can be a little bit more cavalier about your actions. Oh, this right. is kind of mm -hmm. just telling me exactly what I've already know. That was actually one of my issues uh, with this is that I've already been doing this, and it's just now telling me right uh, this information. Basically, my okay, yeah, it you know the it, it's sure. explaining at the top. Yeah, you've got a, how many shots to kill, how many shots your character will make, right? Uh, the type of character it is. Um, I do wish, though, I mean, it seems like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, John, but I, it seems to me like, because they have this whole thing where, like, you guys can see that when you're on the body, it's seven, and then when you're up on the head, it's two. Um, but outside of the difference between body shot and head shot, there doesn't seem to be, at least I don't really... I think they're, I think... Like, can uh, you shoot the weapon out of their hand, I, or... I don't know if you can shoot the weapon out of their hand, but I think there is, if I remember correctly, there is another type of... of of hit 
Because it seems to me like instead of ha making you manually aim, that it would probably be easier just to let you toggle between do I want to shoot him in the head, do I want to shoot him in the body, because that's essentially what that boils down to. But then it ends up being something that you have to do in every single encounter. Yeah, and so this guy's going to be a little bit tougher because he's behind cover. So it's also because he's a he's like a, a just harder character. Like even if you got behind the cover, <clears throat> that particular guy is like a different class of character. No, that guy's a scout. No, I was. I played this part earlier. <laughs> no, no, he's a, that's a that's the logo for a scout. There, I know what you're talking about. That's a little bit later. Is he down the road? Because I swear to God, I just ran right past all of his cover and whatever, and tried to shoot him, and it, it didn't have the two. Or maybe okay, maybe he's just totally bonused up in cover. All right, well there you go. But my people are uh, are pretty uh, pretty bitching and good at their jobs. Fireman, man. Yeah, I think th that guy might be. No, that guy's a scout too. Yeah, I guess it was just because he was from cover, and I was, I was playing this. I was just kind of trucking through it without reading anything, because yeah. you know, it, I, I, I also learned how to tell which character types are not only from those little circular logos, right, um, but also based on the the look of their armor. Mm -hmm. Like I can look at him and go, okay, that's this type of character. This is a shock well, trooper. You really did get into this game. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I this is like I said, this is probably my favorite game for the PlayStation 3. Wow. That's um, amazing. Yeah, it is. I mean, once again, it is very visceral in in its combat, in the the way that combat goes down. It just it seems like m <laughs> so much less so than your you know, move, move, and then attack, and then attack. I mean, in, 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 your, in your normal kind of, like, tactical JRPGs, it just feels a lot more visceral, at least to me, when I'm playing it. So, All right, I'm going to give this guy a name. Scout. Everybody else, everybody. My town Watchman. Every freaking person in this game has a name, except for this guy. He is just Town well, Watchman. Because he's just a random Town Watchman. Actually, I think I'm going to go attack this guy over here. So you can use L1R1 to switch. Yeah, I always switch. forget about that. Also, the other thing that's the that some people may not know is if you're using the actual ag analog stick, yeah, uh, it moves like large. But if you use the D-pad, it does more precise. Yep. And smaller movements. Mm -hmm. uh, I I tend to yeah. So I tend to switch between those two in case people wonder if anyone who's played this game wondered how I was getting the precise movements. I looked this up before we started, and it looks like you can pick this up for about twenty bucks on Amazon. Um, which, if you got a PlayStation 3, like we tend to get the question a lot on the show, uh, on the email show about like, well, I just bought a PlayStation 3. What game should I play that I couldn't have played before? Here's one. Yeah. This is a good one yeah, to pick is... up. Oh, man. That Oof. was some shitty shots. Yep. Well, he sort of was kind of crappy, too. I wish there was some kind of toggle that you could set where you're like, it, if you had a style of shooting where you could say, uh, if I initiate this shooting with like the s triangle button or something, that as soon as I'm done, I want you to end my turn instead of going back to that little like, all right, now I'm going to get shot a few times because it's in, it's all in real time. Yeah, yeah, I do. I kind of agree with that as well. But you know, it's not. It's never that big a deal. It's just sometimes. I mean, one of the things about having a system that's very much more fluid and, and relaxed, like this one is, is that. You can. There are some times where you can like get a character can skim by by the fucking skin of their teeth. Oh yeah, with, like just the teeniest little sliver of health left. Even the, all the while the enemy is shooting at you, and you just manage to get behind cover finally. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Again, I do love the fact that they just automatically start shooting. Um, you know that they do automatically start shooting and everything when you're. Uh, when they move, because mm -hmm. as long as they're in line of sight. Yeah. Uh, so that's... Well, we are pretty much out of time. Um, do you want to... Uh, we'll go through this little cutscene real fast, and you can finish this yeah. mission. Well, it's... it's Yeah, this is kind of a, basically a tank's coming. Yep. Uh, and this is... You're basically... You have three people who are not... In any way, shape, equipped to deal with a tank. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty much like, okay... Essentially, the level turns into less, okay, protect the town, and more of go over here and don't die. Yeah, oh, fuck, let's get the hell out of here. You know, take out a few of the, the grunts while you can, but uh, go over here and don't die. Yeah, it took me a few times to actually finish this mission, and I did it by just running one guy three times off the map because if you get one person out, then that counts as victory. 
instead of dicking around with trying to keep everybody alive and move them. No, actually, in this one, you have to get all three. Nope. I just did it. Oh. I swear to God, I just did it. Weird, because I've always had to do all three. <laughs> I ran, uh, I ran, um, what's his face? The guy. Uh, oh, okay. And Tom uh, Watchman? No, 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 no. The, the main guy. Oh, okay. Because yeah. Tom Watchman Welks. gets fucked up by the tank here, and I didn't want to run him because he didn't have full health. So uh, I just ran, what's his name over there? Ah. Um, well, what's also cool is that you do have a way to heal your characters mm-hmm. uh, in this game, and. Uh, uh, which you know I would show, but I think we're. You said we're out of time, or we're out of time. Yeah, I think that I think we're just gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, but tomorrow we're gonna jump ahead a little bit and take a look at, at some of the more interesting stuff that happens a little bit further down the line. Um, so join us back. I mean, not tomorrow. I keep saying that because that's what I'm used to saying. But yeah. we're doing this every other day. Two days. <laughs> yep. Somebody on the website uh, was talking about how they were kind of a little bit confused. We're. Tr- I'm trying to get this out every Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. Don't blame John. He has no control over this. It's I have no control. How how much, you know, how on fire everything at Rage Select is at any given time. But I'm trying to put this out on Tuesday and Thursday, and then it'll be uh, two day. You know, like the first episode will go up on Tuesday, and then the first episode will be live on YouTube on Thursday. The second episode goes up on Thursday, and then it'll be live on YouTube on Saturday. So that's that's my overall plan. Uh, but yeah, you guys should come back and, and check this out because. Um, it is. This is an interesting game. Are you gonna are you gonna heal real fast? Yeah, I love the fact that you have to aim. Yeah, uh, even though it heal. doesn't really do that. Yeah, I'm turning this light bulb on. I'm totally healed. Woo, woo. Um. <coughs> so yeah, uh, come back over here on Thursday and check out a little bit more of Valkyria Chronicles. Yes.